World War II saw some of the most groundbreaking advances in military technology in history. The sheer scale and stakes involved in the epic conflict explain how so many nations prioritized developing the fastest aircraft and the most powerful bombs. Still, many of the innovations resulting from the war didn't come from a laboratory, but from the battlefield, where soldiers would often resort to their wits to solve intricate problems. Training footage reveals a peculiar example of the creativity of the time in the form of a battle sled. The video shows a group of 12 soldiers getting inside 12 individual battle sleds joined together by a rotating axle. The chained sleds were then pulled by an American M4 Sherman tank. As outrageous as the idea may seem, it was a daring proposal at the time to solve the problem of how to move infantry troops along tanks without them becoming an easy target. The ambitious scheme was created by then Brigadier General John W. O'Daniel, one of the most decorated and respected officers of World War II. If the plan worked, the infantry troopers would be able to ride along with the tank while keeping the lowest possible profile. And when the time came, they would spring into action and take the enemy by surprise. An unconventional leader. John W. O'Daniel was a daring and ambitious leader who always sought to deliver unconventional solutions to pressing issues. From a young age, he was known for accomplishing almost anything he set his mind to. He was an accomplished athlete, a proficient teacher, a diplomat, and a consecrated military professional. Despite his short stature, he proved to be a fierce and outspoken leader whose gravel-voiced and determined attitudes often clashed with other officials during the war. By the time World War II exploded, O'Daniel was already highly experienced in almost all sorts of military endeavors, and he had proved more than able to think outside the box. In fact, he led soldiers through World War I, World War II, and the Korean War in an impressive four-decade military career. Servicemen knew him by his motto, sharpen your bayonet, and General Dwight D. Eisenhower called him, quote, one of our outstanding combat soldiers. Even the press followed his career closely and often equaled him to General George S. Patton Jr. for his strong personal opinions and fearless demeanor, becoming known across the globe for his ability to courageously mobilize the 3rd Infantry Division across the European theater of operations during World War II while delivering numerous victories to the Allies. A mobile foxhole. One of the most vulnerable moments a soldier could find himself in was when he charged an enemy position along with a combat armored vehicle. Not only was the trooper exposed to small arms fire directed at him, but he was also susceptible to suffer collateral damage from fire directed at the tank. During World War II, when a soldier was not moving, he would often dig a foxhole. This shallow defensive hole would protect the trooper from small arms fire, allowing him to quickly peek out from cover and fire back at the enemy. Brigadier General John W. O'Daniel believed that if servicemen could have the benefits of a foxhole while moving behind an armored vehicle, they would gain an enormous advantage, especially in grassy terrains where the soldiers could move completely undetected. With a clear objective in mind, O'Daniel began to materialize his vision while he and the 3rd Infantry Division were taking part in the invasion of Italy in World War II. Footage from the time shows his prototypes in action as the numerous tests O'Daniel and his men performed were recorded to demonstrate the effectiveness and reliability of his invention. He hoped the contraption would be a game changer, not only for the Italian campaign, but for the American war effort. Producing the sleds. Not having vast resources at his disposal, O'Daniel built his sleds using what he had available. In this case, it was half torpedo shells that were just large enough to hold one soldier lying down. Six torpedo shells were joined together and attached to each side of a tank, and a dozen sleds were pulled forward in the ditches left by the tank's tracks, allowing an infantry squad to complement a tank without being exposed to small arms fire and anti-personnel mines. O'Daniel sent a sketch of what he wanted to Colonel William H. James, who was in charge of ordnance in Italy. James and his staff embraced the idea and the possibility of developing something that could save American lives, and they created a model with runners to prevent heat from friction. 
The sleds were built in a field near the Kapu in utter secrecy, but soon they had a whole production line running. Using 80 welding sets in stalls under a giant circus tent, and with the expert supervision of Sergeant Selfers as a chief welder, the 5th Army and the PBS mechanics worked eight-hour shifts to manufacture over 360 sleds between April 29th and May 14th, 1943. O'Daniel's vision was now a reality, and he was ready to test it in an actual combat scenario at the incoming Battle of Anzio. Combat Service O'Daniel had the opportunity to test his battle sleds during the Battle of Anzio in January 1944. Thus, as Allied troops approached Rome, many of the American tanks were fitted with their devices, and the infantry servicemen were advised to use them as cover. Unfortunately, their performance was not anywhere close to demonstrating the reliability the early tests had shown. The first issue was that the soldiers felt reluctant to use the sleds, saying that they were not only sitting ducks, but calling them dead ducks. One of the main issues that O'Daniel overlooked during the early tests was the behavior of the tanks during an attack. When a tank became immobilized by a ditch or a mine, the infantrymen being pulled behind it became extremely exposed and unable to protect themselves from enemy fire. In one particular regiment, a platoon of tanks equipped with four sets of sleds failed to get into action because of rough terrain and the loss of several tanks to mines. Meanwhile, soldiers from another regiment had to completely abandon the sleds, as the terrain simply didn't allow for the intended use of the contraptions. Only one of the regiments is reported to have successfully used the sleds to move to an enemy position, which they then captured with the assistance of the accompanying tanks. Results Overall, the scheme delivered few satisfying results, with the tricky terrain proving unfit for the sleds, or the troopers having to abandon them when the tanks had to reverse and conduct evasive maneuvers rather than remain exposed to enemy fire. Most officers concluded that the battle sleds were more trouble than they were worth. Still, General O'Daniel felt that the combat test was inconclusive and that his invention should be employed against organized positions when terrain and anti-tank defenses would allow it. Eventually, many of the sleds were salvaged from the battlefield and used in the invasion of southern France. Still, the results continued to be mediocre, and after several months, the idea was abandoned. Despite their unsuccessful run, the sleds and the footage documenting their functionality showcased American resourcefulness and creativity on the battlefield and the troops' willingness to solve problems on the fly. Thank you for watching my video. If you enjoyed this story, go ahead and click on your screen to check out our other Dark Documentaries channels, where we delve into some of the most thrilling military campaigns and battles that shaped our world today. We publish new content regularly, so stay tuned.